Hello, three commas traders. My name's Jared. Today, I'll be going over how to optimize your DCA bots here on three commas. If you're creating a new DCA bot or want to edit an existing bot in order to make it more profitable, this video is for you. We're going to review the historical data of a pair and the deal start conditions in order to create a more successful DCA bot. Without further delay, let's get right into this. Now that we're on three commas, we're going to make our way to the DCA bot section. We have a pre-made DCA bot we can optimize. You might recognize this bot from the DCA bot tutorial we've made. I put a link in the description if you'd like to see that video. This bot is a pretty basic multi-pair DCA bot. If we go to the My Deals section, we can take a look at the currently open deals and discover why we want to optimize this bot. As you can see here, this bot is currently in a deal with Ethereum, but it's in the red. This isn't the end of the world, as it does have safety orders and it will more than likely move eventually but we don't want to wait so long on this deal. We need to keep in mind that this bot is a multi-pair bot, so any changes I make will take effect when working with every pair selected to be used by this DCA bot. If we click the pair over here, you can see that it's a decent bit away from the next safety order, and even farther from the next. If we go back, we can also click on the bot's name to be teleported to the bot's page where we can view its settings. We're going to want to edit the bot. Here, you can stop the bot, obviously edit the bot, copy it, and delete it. You have some other options after these if you'd like to export the DCA bot's information as a CSV, share the bot using a shareable link, and finally reset the shared link in order to disable the previous link you shared. You can click edit here if you'd like to modify the bot right now on the real account. If you're content with the performance of your bot and or do not want to risk any negative changes being made to your DCA bot, I would suggest creating a shareable link for yourself copying the link you make, and swapping over to the paper trading account in order to create these new bot changes on the test account to get a good idea if they would work in your favor or not. This way, you're able to make more than one DCA bot as long as your subscription plan allows you to. All you would need to do is paste this link into the search bar, and you should be able to direct yourself to the same bot where you're able to make a copy. If you're on the paper account, it will make this copy on the paper account. Once you click the copy button, it will take you to the bot configuration page. We're going to select the blue edit settings button. Once you're in the settings section for your DCA bot, you're going to want to open up a second tab so you can view the market while making the changes to the bot. For this case, we have multiple pairs we're working with, so we're going to want to review each market in order to take those into consideration when making changes to our bot. Another great option would be to make five separate single pair bots in order to allow you to make changes to the bot per pair. Altcoins tend to follow the price movements of Bitcoin and Ethereum and have higher highs in their markets, but also lower lows. This means that the distance your safety orders need to be at may be wider than what other pairs might require. For this reason, single pair bots can come in handy when you want to work with multiple pairs. Since the bot we're working with is supposed to work with a set amount of funds and we can't have 5 orders opened at a time, we're going to keep this bot as a multi-pair bot and review the 5 charts to find the max drawdown for each pair. This will help us decide what our max safety order price deviation should be. For time's sake, we're going to only review the Ethereum chart, but the steps will remain the same for each and every pair you'd work with. Here in a separate tab, we have the trading view chart using the 4 hour time frame. We're going to select the measurement tool and select the lowest price the token was able to hit. Other methods can be used for deciding the max safety order price deviation, but this is one of the most straightforward methods of doing so. The total amount would be about 43%. If we set the safety order settings for the bot to place the last one at 43%, it will likely catch the lowest price possible if it were to fall to that level. There are many other factors at play here, such as the order of your trade on the exchange, and if it's a maker order or a taker order, but this would give you the best chance. If we go back to the bot settings page, we can make this edit now. We don't have the funds to spare here, so we cannot increase the safety order size or the amount that can be opened. We can leave the active safety order count alone. The two settings we're able to edit here would be the price deviation to open safety order and the safety order step scale. These two options will affect the deviation of the safety orders without affecting the amount of funds used. We're going to enter a multiple of 2.34 for the price deviation option, and for the safety order step scale, we'll enter a multiple of 3.7. This will reduce the max safety order price deviation to 43.03%, which is close enough to 43% for me. Now that we have the safety order set to a more optimized level, 
we're going to move on over to the deal start conditions. There are many different ways of going about these conditions and they are extremely versatile. You can make thousands of DCA bots all with different deal start conditions. The best method of finding the right ones for you would be to try out a bunch of different conditions and run them on the paper trading account in order to get an idea of which conditions perform the best. For this spot, we have a single RSI condition with a length of 14 on the 1 hour time frame. When the signal value is under 30, it will make the purchase. This signal isn't the most selective, and it can still enter a deal at unideal times. For this reason, we're going to make it more strict by adding another RSI signal. We have a bunch of other options, but for simplicity's sake, we're going to stick with RSI. We have another video going over the deal start conditions for the DCA bots that is in the works, so stay tuned for that. When it's released, you'll be able to find the link in this video's description, along with some articles on the offered deal start conditions here on 3 commas. Moving on, we're going to try making another RSI condition, but this time only using an RSI length of 7. This means it will take the last 7 candles into account when making its calculation for the RSI value, which we'll also keep at 30. This one will be on the 4 hour time frame and we'll leave it to trigger once it's less than 30. For the previous deal start condition, we are going to set it as crossing up, which means it will need to cross above the signal value of 30, while the other deal start condition remains under 30. This example isn't one you should copy, but it's just to show you how this works. Make sure to use the chart and other information you have at your disposal in order to choose a proper signal for yourself. You can even select pre-made signals or bots made by other traders if this is too overwhelming for you. I have placed other helpful videos and articles in the description that would help you make a decision on the conditions you should use. Moving on to the last thing I'd like to talk about when optimizing your DCA bots, the target profit. You're able to use conditions to close the deal if you'd rather it be triggered using those, just like the deal start condition. Enabling this option will mirror your deal start conditions in the opposite direction. There's a minimum profit option so it will not close for a loss if it has a signal triggered. You'll notice that the conditions of the signal value have been changed to 70. This would be the overbought level for the token. Crossing down would mean it has to fall below the RSI value of 70. Greater than would mean it has to be above 70 in order for the deal to close. Below this is the minimum profit option I was talking about previously. You can set this to your liking to make sure you do not accept a profit below the value you set. Keep in mind that the profit amount can vary depending if you're exiting the deal via market or limit order. When you're done making the changes to the bot, you can go ahead and create the bot if you're on the paper trading section or start it if you're editing the existing bots. And there we are. The DCA bot is now optimized for trading with the specific pairs it works with. It will run non-stop until you stop it. Having more than one bot here on the paper trading account of similar settings will allow you to see the performance of each deal start condition and help you decide which one is best for your DCA bot. We only made one bot today, but I would highly suggest making at least three different versions of the bot. The more you make, the better. That's going to wrap up this quick video on optimizing your DCA bots here on 3 commas. As always, you can find more helpful sources in the video's description. If you have any questions or concerns, our support team is always available 24-7 and can be found on the 3 commas website. Thanks so much for watching and learning with us, and as always, happy trading!